Oh, there's a little bit of smell to this. It's a, it's an unusual smell. Hey, hey, how are you? Huh? Oh, a little stinky that, but I'll go into that later. Right then, it's me, Robert Record, Rob Rekahan. Huh? Do you know me? Do you? You should know me. Let me put this down for a second. Right then. I am Robert Record, and I tell you now, I'm very famous. I'm famous for many things. I've written many books, you see. Ooh, the ground of art. You've all read that, have you? Oh, one of you. Ah, huh, that's a bit disappointing. Never mind. I'll tell you about the ground of art now. It's about these symbols here. What's that? Ad. Yes, that's it. What is this? Yes, take away. Yes. And what is this? Multiply and that divide. They are symbols of what subject? Mathematics, boys. Mathematics, yes, indeed. Now then, I am very famous for my mathematics. I'm writing about mathematics in the ground of art. And also, let me tell you about another book I wrote The Pathway to Knowledge. Now then, who's read that then? Come on. Hands up, nobody? Oh, well, here we go. Right then, let me tell you about this then. The Pathway to Knowledge is about this. Here, what's that? Triangle, yes. What's this? Yes, square. What's that? Oh, yes, a diamond. Now then, what are they? They are shapes, Kovyuch. Yes, they are shapes. Now then, these shapes all have straight lines, as you can see. Now then, tell me, tell me, what do you call shapes with straight lines? What do you call them? They are, they start with a P. That's it. I'll give you a little clue now. Here we are. Here's my friend Polly. Hello. They are Polly gone ships. <laughs> Polly's gone, you see. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. I do it all the time, see. Right then, I've got many other books I've written about stars. Ping! Algebra. Boing! And I've also written a book about urine. Urine, yes. Or pee, pee Now then, we'll go back to us now. You see this? Pee, pee or wee. Not the Nintendo we mind. No, wee, oui, wee, oui, monsieur. <laughs> yes, yes. But this isn't wee, oui, obviously. Although it did have a smell. Oh. oh, it's still warm. Oh, my smack. Oh. oh, I'm gargling with that. Never mind that now. Let's move on. Right then. Oh, my smack. Oh, that's tangy. But I tell you now, right? I have been famous about many things. Mathematics is the main one. Now, let me tell you about the other things that I'm famous for. I was most famous for one thing in particular, a symbol. But I won't tell you about that now, actually. I'll tell you about that later. Right, I was born in 1512, 1512. Now, this was in the Tudor time, when uh, Henry VII was the king, right? Now, uh, during this time, I went to school, obviously. But I didn't use the usual numbers, no, no. We used Roman numerals back in those times. Do you know what Roman numerals are, then? Do you, Bach? No? Well, let me tell you. Here they are, up here. That's one for you up there, you see? That's two. Do you like two? Yes. Three. There's a pattern pattern developing here. And then you see the four. The I with the V. You know, that's it. And then five is just a V. V for victory. That's it. And then the I goes the other side of the V for six. And the pattern goes on. Seven. Eight. Nine then is a little different because there's an X there. Because ten is X factor. Yes, a very important number. Number ten. You know what? I've got a little puzzle for you now. Try and work this out. Where did I live? Where did I go to school? Uh, here in Wales, a little town in Wales. We'll use now the 10 with the Roman numerals and the letter B. Yes? Put it together. 10 B. Huh? Yes, I said 10 B. Yes, it didn't be a school in Welsh mind. Ten B in English, and that's where I went to school. And I loved mathematics. And after this, I moved on. Yes, I went to university then. And in this university, I did mathematics and I did medicine because I wanted to be a doctor. That's it. Now I was very lucky. I got a job with the king of that time, who was Edward the Sixth. Yes, indeed. Edward the Sixth here. Ah, oh, should he buy? Yes. And we were going to be good friends. Now, I would look after him if he was ill, obviously, and give him some medicine. But I would also do some um, puzzles, mathematical puzzles with him. And I've got just the one for you now. It's the Jane Seymour puzzle. I'll get it for you now. You wait there, King. Woo! <laughs> oh, now then, my smart. Here we go. Yes, I have got a pause, a puzzle for you, and here it is. Now then, this is called the Jane Seymour Puzzle. Ooh, right. Oh, do you know who Jane Seymour is? You don't. Well, let me tell you then. Right, Jane Seymour, right, 
was Edward the Sixth's mother. Yes, she was. Well, hello, Mom. <laughs> yes. So that's who Jane Seymour is, and she loved a bit of shopping. So I've kind of I've mixed the shopping into this puzzle. Here we go. Let's make this nice and interesting. Listen up. Edward the Sixth went to buy two hats and three scarves for his mother, Jane Seymour. Now, she wanted to go to lots of parties, and she wanted to wear a combination of hat and scarf. But she couldn't wear a combination of hat and scarf more than once. So, how many parties could Jane Seymour go to only wearing a combination of hat and scarf once? Oh, it's quite tricky, isn't it? It's very tricky. But I think we've got some props in this box to help us. Right then, we have two hats here. Well, I've got a red, red hat on, so I'll keep that on. And there's a green one, so I'll use that. And we've got three scarves as well. We've got a green and a red and a white scarf as well, right? Oh, the colours of wheels, my spark. Yes, indeed. Right then, let's start with the first combination. Combination. Right, we've got a, a red hat on and a green scarf. Here we are. That's one, you see? Now, if I put the other stuff on as well, I guess. So look, I'll put that on as well. That's it. See, it's good. Put that on like that. It's nice. i put that on as well. Ah, is that right? Oh, no, of course it's not right. You can't have... That's not a combination of one hat and one scarf. That's all of it. That's all of it. Now then, you have to have... You have to have a little bit of decorum. Oh, that's a good word, that is, decorum. Yes. Now then, we have to make sure that everything is right. Now, we'll have one hat on, and then we'll have one scarf. That's better, isn't it? Yes? That's it. Like that. And that is now one combination. You see? That's the first one. So, I'll take this scarf off and use another scarf then. Uh, here we go. Green scarf. Like that. You see? Now that is two combinations. Hat, scarf. That's it. Different, but the same. Now then, we need another combination. I'll keep this hat on because there's one more scarf to use. The white scarf, of course. So we put that on. And how many com combinations is that now? I've got the red hat. White scarf, that's three combinations. Exactly. Now, answer me this. Are there any more scarves to use? No, there's not. Which means there's no more use for this red hat, is there? We'll have to change it now to the green hat. Here we are. Put that in there. Put this over here. That's it. Lovely. Oh, there we are. Ooh, but I need a scarf. So I'll go for colour coordination with green. You see? And now... I have another combination of a green hat and green scarf. And how many is that now? We're up to four. Yes, four combinations. So that is four parties then. Uh, okay, let's get rid of that green scarf. Let's try the red scarf then. Here we go. How many combinations is that now? Five. That's it. I think you're right. Yes, five. Well, I think we're done, aren't we? Yes, we're done. I'll pack it up. No, we're not. Hold on. You're right. There's one more combination, isn't there? And here it is, the white scarf with the green hat. We haven't had that before, have we? No, we haven't. So I'll put that on. Oh, look at that. Very festive indeed. Yes, pity it's not Christmas. But there we are. I've got it on there. And how many combinations that, does that leave us with? It's... Six combinations, and that is the correct answer. You can't have any more than six, so Jane Seymour can only go to six parties. That means three of the three combinations with the green hat, and three different combinations with the red hat, because there's only three scarves. Yes, so that's it. They're all different combinations, and it's six. That's the correct answer. Well done, everybody. Well, you know what? That was excellent. I'm going to switch my hats now. And then I'm going to go and get you the next puzzle because you were very quick on that one. See you in a minute. Hold on. Oh. Hello. Right then. Here I am ready to do another mathematical puzzle with you. Now, before I go on, I must tell you, oh, unfortunately, King Edward VI, he died of TB. Oh, it's very sad. Bless him. And then I had to go and work for Queen Mary I. Oh, she wasn't a very nice woman at all, I'm telling you. Oh, she was a Catholic, and I was a Protestant, and she spent most of her time trying to kill Protestants like me. Oh. So, what I did was, I went out to work outside in the fresh air, working with the animals. But what I didn't know was Queen Mary I, she loved her horses. 
So I said, oh, there we are. I'll make a puzzle, a mathematical puzzle involving the horses. And that's what I did. Now then, I have that puzzle here for you. Here we go. And it's called Queen Mary's Thirsty Horse Puzzle. All right? Queen Mary's horse is thirsty and needs water. You must give him exactly four litres of water. He's very fussy. <laughs> Any less, and he will be too thirsty to pull the Queen's carriage. Any more, and he'll have to stop to go to the toilet for a pee-pee. Oh, there we are. So we have to give him four litres of water exactly. All right? Now, let's see what we've got to help us here. Well, we have a three-litre jug, and we have a five-litre jug. So where's the four-litre jug? Oh, there's no four-litre jug. So we can only use these two jugs here, the five and the three. But we have to find four litres of water exactly. Right, this is a puzzle, isn't it? Well, let's try it together. Right, does four litres of water go into a three-litre jug? No, it doesn't. So let's pour it into the five-litre jug to begin with. Let's start there, yes? Right, here we go. Five litres of water into the five-litre jug. Oh. Be careful. We don't want to make too much mess, do we? You know. There we are. The servants won't be happy with me. There we are. That's... Well, it's not quite five litres, so we'll have to take some more water out of this bowl as well. Because as you can see, I've got a black line all the way around the top there to show us where five litres is exactly. There we are. Five litres of water in the five litre jug. Great. So how do we find four? Hmm. I can't take one litre out to make four because I haven't got a one litre jug. But I do have a three litre jug. So why don't I pour the five litres into a three? Let's see what happens then. Right then. So, I've taken three out of five, which leaves me with what in the five litre jug? Leaves me with two, yes. So I've got two in there. If I could duplicate this, then we would have four, because two plus two is four. So we just need to do this again. Right, to do that, I need that, that three litre jug empty again. So I'm going to get rid of this water Put it into this bowl. We don't need that water anymore. Well, not for now, anyway. And now I need this jug empty again, so I'll stick the two litres in here to keep it safe till later. And we need to replicate what we did just now. What was the first thing we did? Oh, yes. We filled up the five litre jug with five litres of water. So let's do that again then. Got to be careful here, you see. Lots of water everywhere. Excellent. Not quite five litres, though, is it? So, a little bit more, I think. From the bowl. There we have it. We have five litres exactly in five litre jug. And then we have two litres of water in the three litre jug. Still not four litres. I know. How many litres do we need to create three litres of water? One litre, yes, because two plus one is three. So let's get one exactly out from the five litre jug. We know it's one because there's already two in there. So two plus one is three. And if you take one out of five, five minus one is what? Four litres of water, exactly. Oh, there we are. And now the horse will be very happy. Up you come, horsey. Thirsty horse. In you go to the water. Meow. No, you're a horse. Oh, you can't get the staff these days. But there we are. We have four litres of water exactly in the five litre jug. Well done. Surely bye. Yes, it's me, Rob Wreck, once again. Now then, as you can see, I'm wearing a hat it shows that I went to jail. Well, I didn't go to jail. My friend, a farmer, he went to jail. So I went to see him, and to cheer him up a little bit, I created a little puzzle for him about sheep 
and chickens. Well, he was a farmer, wasn't he? So here is the puzzle. The sheep and the chicken puzzle. A farmer is taking his animals to the market to be sold. He has chickens and sheep in his cart. If there are 48 legs and 20 heads in the cart, how many chickens and how many sheep are there? Oh, OK. So if there's 48 legs and 20 heads in the cart, how many chickens and how many sheep are there? Oh, this is quite difficult. I'm going to need a whiteboard to help me on this one. I'll be back now. Chicken and sheep puzzle. Right. So, we have chickens, we have sheep, we have heads, and we have legs. Now, how many heads were there? Do you remember? The puzzle, it said 20. Yes, 20 heads. So, let's put that there so that we can remember. And then, how many legs were there? Yes, 48 legs. So let's put 48 in there. And now we'll leave those like that. So we're going to have to work this out somehow. But firstly, we need to know how many heads were there, how many chickens and how many sheep. Well, if there's 20 heads, we don't want any animals without heads. So let's say 10. We'll try 10 chickens to start off with. And then we'll try 10 sheep. 10 plus 10 is 20. There we are. Now, we will have to multiply that with something. But what? Well, what's the difference between chicken legs and sheep legs? Do we know? Well, chicken have, chickens have two legs and sheep had four. So let's put that and that there. That equals to the answer. So let's try some mathematics. Uh, our two times tables. So 10 times 2 is what? 20. And 10 times 4 is what? 40. Yes, indeed. So now we need to add these two up. So 40 plus 20 is what? 60. Is that correct? No, it is not. It's not correct because we need 48. That's correct, but this isn't. So we're going to get rid of that. Get rid of this. We can leave those two. Well, we need to get rid of these, okay, because that isn't correct. It is correct in this with the heads, but it's not correct for the legs. So we'll have to try again. What should we try this time then? What about another number? How about we try, hmm, oh, I know, 15 chickens. Let's try 15 chickens, okay? So we've got 15 chickens this time, which means we leaves us with five sheep because 15 plus five is 20. So we know that is correct. Great. Then two times 15 is what? 30, excellent. And what is five times four? Uh, well, that would be uh, 1, 5 is 5, 2, 5 is 10, 3, 5 is 15, 4, 5 is 20. There we are. Beautiful. So 30 plus 20 is what? 50. Are we, are we correct? Are we correct? Ah, oh, so close. But yet, so far. Right, we'll have to try something else. In Welsh, they say three troi gymro. Three turns for a Welshman. Let's see if that's correct. Um, right, what should we try this time? Anybody got any any uh, choices that they'd like? I, what? 16? Well, all right, let's try 16 then. 16 chickens. And how many sheep then? Four. There we are. Four, all right. So 16 twos is what? 32. Yes, great. And what's four, four? Four, four. One, four, four. Two, four is eight. Three, four is 12. Four, four is 16. There we are. So... 32 plus 16. 6 plus 2 is 8. 3 plus 1 is 4. That is 16 plus 4. 20. Look at that. So we've got both correct answers, which means how many chickens do we have? Well, we have 16 chickens and we have four sheep in the cart. And that's how you work it out. Now, we could have obviously tried different things, but we didn't. We went for three terms, and that's how we got the correct answer. But, you know, you've got to take it as long as it takes to get the correct answer, and there is only one correct answer. Well done, Dayanki. Yes, indeed, you. It is me, Rob Reck. Now, let me tell you what that answer was once again to that last puzzle. Well, there were 16 chickens and four sheep in that cart. That is the correct answer. Well done. Well done, you. Now then, do you remember me asking you, what was Robert Record most famous for? Well, mathematics, writing books, but most famous for creating the equals sign. Yes, that's who created it. Me, Rob Reck, from 
Tenby. So yes, you can say thank you to me if you want. Oh, you're welcome. I'll see you soon. And love mathematics, everyone. Goodbye to you.